What is up guys, it's your boy Swalam here, back with another Classic WoW video for Season of Discovery. Now, today I want to share with you one of the best ways that I'm making gold in Phase 2 by using the Auction House. Now, after incorporating this into my gold making schedule, or like my daily routine pretty much, it's just become the best way for me to make gold, and at the moment it's probably the way I'm making about 75% of my gold at the moment, so it's definitely making a substantial amount of my gold right now, and it's very easy. It's also kind of a topic that I have been preaching ever since Vanilla WoW came out, or Classic WoW came out, in 2019. So we're not breaking new grounds here, it's just like using the same psychology that I've been using for years at this point, and in the season of this Discovery with the increased frequency of raids with the 3 day lockout, this is just making even more gold than it usually does. So before we get into the video I do want to shout out my gold making guide for anyone who's looking to make more gold. If you have gotten this guide I do appreciate it a lot and let me know your feedback on everything in the comments down below as well. If you haven't checked it out it's a 157 pages long document including gold farms, investments, what to craft, what to flip and just talking everything gold making in one place. Now the guide itself is supposed to be exactly that, it's a guide to gold making. If you want to delve even deeper after the guide, having this guide also gives you access to a private gold making community where you can ask other people questions, me questions, I'm also posting early access to videos there. So the guide itself is like an introduction plus a guide to gold making and then to get even more advanced stuff we have a whole gold making community set up for that as well, which you get access to and you will have access to that community for Ever, right? And you also get early access to every gold making video, whether that is gold farms, phase 3 investments, phase 4 investments, phase 3 gold farms, and just auction house strategies as well. All of the gold making videos will be in early access, that way you can take maximum advantage of them before they go public. Getting the guide also helps me out a lot, and I think I'll be able to help you make some gold. It could be a win-win scenario, so if you haven't checked it out yet, the link to it will be down below in the video description or the pinned comment. Now, let's talk about some psychology and the... Um the thought process that I've been using, which has been making me a lot of gold recently. Now, this has to do with raiding and selling the right consumables used in the raid at the right time. Now, this one is very simple, and I'm just going to talk about it real fast. Well, I say real fast, but I want to talk about everything about uh, what's happening here. So I'm selling mostly two items. It's mostly one, but it's anywhere between one and three, even four sometimes. But I'm mostly personally selling two items. One of them is the Lesser Arcane Elixir, and one of them is the Elixir of Firepower. And I'm buying the materials to craft these. Usually, like let's just say raid resets on day one. So BFD and Nomorigan reset at the same time right now, let's call that day one. In this case, I buy all of my materials on day three. So Nomorigan and BFD reset, people buy their stuff on raid day, some people raid on day number two, and some people also tend to raid on day number three. But what you usually see happening here is that materials usually goes up in price because the consumable goes in up in price every single day the days that the raid is resetting. So on raid day number one, I sell all of my consumables. Day number two, I sell the leftovers. Day number three, I buy all the materials, send them to my crafter, and start crafting the consumables one more time. So day one sell, day two sell, day three buy, and day one sell. Alternatively, if you have a lot of gold, you can also use something that I've been doing recently, which is literally not even crafting. You can buy the elixirs on day number three and reset them on day number one, and you tend to make a lot of gold. Like, I can just use TSM right now and show you the lesser arcane elixirs, for example. These ones I have been having a lot of, um, actually, I've been having a lot of success with these. I usually buy the materials here for about 65 silver each, and then you have to buy the vial on top as well. So 70 silver to make one lesser arcane elixir. They're currently selling for 96 silver. You can also see I have a couple of them on the auction house right now, Solheim Bank, that is me. And whenever raid day is happening, these can go all the way up to 1.4 gold each, and people still buy them. The thing is, when I'm selling these potions, it doesn't matter what the price is, they're going to fly off the auction house at the exact same rate either way. So if you reset the price from 1 gold to 1 1.3 or 1 1.4, that is 30% to 40% profit margins. 
that you are making. The only thing is, the bigger of a server you play on, the more people try to cut that price back down, so the more gold you have, the more of the items you can keep buying, and the more control you can have of the market itself. Now, if you don't have a lot of gold, don't worry, once again, you can literally buy materials on day number three, craft them into potions on day, uh, on day number three, and then sell them whenever the raid is resetting. It's all about playing around when the raid is actually resetting, because then a lot of people go back and do the raid one more time, and the consumables just absolutely skyrocket in price. The lesser arcane elixirs, for example, go all the way down to 88 silver, or between 80 and 85 silver on day number three, and then they go back to over one gold every single time the raid is resetting, and they're flying off the auction house as well. Now, when it comes to flipping the market here, it's one of my favorite items to flip, because first of all, it has a high sell rate. So if you're spending, let's just say it costs you 200 gold to reset the market, if you're making 40 silver profit per potion, you're gonna make that gold back very fast because they have a fast sell rate. Whenever I'm selling potions, I'm selling about 250 of them every single hour. So if I'm making, let's just say 10 silver profit per elixir, that is about, what, 25 gold per hour, right? but I'm usually making way more. I'm usually making about 30, 40, or sometimes even 50 silver profit for every single elixir. That is based on me also flipping the markets, right? But just buying the materials and selling the potions is about 25 silver profit margins right now. And the reason why this one specifically is great is that you have to have reputation to buy the recipe for it. If you don't have the reputation here, I think it's a reward. You need to have a reward on an alchemist to make these. So they have a barrier to entry, which means not everyone can do this, and it requires significant time output to actually farm the reputation needed to get this recipe. And any items with a barrier to entry will guarantee more profit as well. That being said, I'm still making a lot of gold on lesser, uh, not lesser, elixir of firepowers as well, like even this one. It's selling for, actually it's down to 45 right now, but this one is going all the way up to between 60 and 70 silver on raid reset day. So like, these ones as well can also be reset just the same. The only thing is, the lesser arcane elixirs are used by absolutely everyone who's using spell damage. So like, warlocks, mages, boomkins, elemental shamans, a shadow priest, you name it, right? But the elixirs of firepower are only used by mages and warlocks. Maybe somebody else who might use them with a Dragon Breath Chili, but I think, like, in general, the Lesser Arcane Elixirs are selling more than the Firepower ones, and then having the Barrier to Entry does help guarantee a little bit more profit, because it has a Barrier to Entry. That being said, even this one, you can see Fire Oil, for example. At the moment, this is not even profitable to buy, by the way, to buy and make the Elixirs of Firepower. But at the current price, what I would do here at the moment, you can see there's 45 silver each, and they're below 100%, and the raid is about to reset in one day as well. So I'm gonna wait, let the prices go down, and then I can flip them to about 60 silver each and probably get a lot of sales on this specific one. So Elixirs of Firepower, really good to flip. Same thing with Elixir or Arcane Elixirs, really good to flip as well. Try to sell raid consumables on their raid reset day, and just use the same psychology of consumables always going up in price, or maybe not always, but a high percentage going up in price whenever the raid is resetting. And the thing is, materials also goes up in price when the actual potions go up in price, so buy the materials on day number three, or try to get them as cheap as possible. Now, just to show you guys some stats and show you guys that I am actually making a lot of gold by doing this, we can just go to TSM real quick, and I can show you how many King's Blood I've been buying. I have been buying 9,765 King's Blood, and you can see the, the price is very a lot. It's all the way from 4.8 silver each, which was like back in phase one and early phase two, and then 13.79 silver on the top, with the average buying being about 10 silver. So it's all about about knowing the prices on your market because you can see the region market value average is way less which means king's blood will be way less on many of your servers so even if you can see lesser arcane elixirs not being the same price as they are for me that's not really a problem. Take a look at the crafting cost and then compare that to the actual uh, cost of the elixir 
even though it might not be selling for 96 silver for you, you might still make the exact same profit that I'm making, because crafting it could be even cheaper for you. Goldthorn as well is 62 silver on my pro on my server for example, and I have bought 9,500 of them with an average buy-in price of 50 silver each. Now, when it comes to my lesser arcane elixirs, as you can see, I have sold 5,822 of them, and I've been selling them for an average price of 87 silver. You can also see the bottom price was 46 or 44, and the highest price was 1 gold 34. Now, 1 gold 34 is usually when I'm resetting the market, and they are selling really fast. So once again, if you have a lot of capital, try resetting the market here, and make more gold. If you can just sell a hundred of them for 30 gold per, um, 30 silver markup, you're making 30 gold more from a hundred sales, right? So resetting the market on elixirs, really, really good. And uh, just don't undercut by too much. I, I just I get so mad all the time when I see people undercutting and resetting the price back down. If I'm if I'm trying to reset, for example, to 1.3 gold, there's one idiot on my server who puts like a hundred stacks of one for like a 20 silver undercut, or even more, trying to get like fast sales. It annoys me every single time, but if you're looking for fast gold, and if you have a little bit of gold to invest, take a look at rate consumables and see how much profit they make for you. Because the thing for me is, they make about 10 to 30 silver profit each, and they sell so fast. The volume you're able to offload is absolutely insane, and if you want to take a look at like, you can use JP Worgen to find out the average prices on your server, and then just make a decision based off that, right? Try to flip the raid consumables on raid reset day, and buy materials on day number 3, aka the day before the reset, and you should be able to make a lot of gold. This is currently how I'm making most of my gold, and I'm getting about 30% profit every single time that I make a Lesser Arcane Elixir. So, so far, 30% of 5,000 gold. We're making a lot of gold. I think that's like 1.7k or something. Profit only from selling this. And it doesn't really take a lot of time to make. I can just buy the materials, start crafting, go and do something in real life, and then I come back and suddenly you've crafted a bunch of potions. Either way, that's the video for today. It might not be the most interesting, but definitely a really good way to make gold. And if there's one thing to take away from this, is keep doing this every single phase. Now, we're only in phase 2, and the same thing will be happening in phase 3, phase 4, and phase 5. Take a look at what's needed in the raid, and flip that on raid day. Or buy the materials beforehand, craft the, mater craft the consumables, and sell the actual consumes whenever the raid is resetting. That's basically the takeaway. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like down below as well, and let me know if you have any other ways that you're making gold that I haven't covered yet in the comments down below. I would love to hear how you're making your gold. Either way, thank you for watching. As always, I really do appreciate it, and I'll see you again very soon.